Hello everyone and welcome to the 20th C++ tutorial in my series of C++ tutorials. Um, today I'm going to learn you about uh, advanced arrays and I learned you about basic arrays before in the third I suppose tutorial but um, this time uh, I'm going to learn you about advanced arrays and it is very 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 important that you really 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 focus and really 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 understand this and you might even put the video on pause sometimes you know just to recap in your brain what I just did and then when you think you got it uh, start the video again because if you don't get this you're never going to get into um, advanced game programming or anything if that's what you want so um, first of all create a new source file and some required information again. And for the first time, actually, I think it's the first time I say this. Don't focus on the required information right now. Just focus on what I'm going to tell you, because this is really important. Uh, now you c we're going to uh, use a um, cannonball example, actually. So um, create an int right here called max cannonballs still equal to 3. Now create a um, array which I learned you about in the uh, third tutorial called um, canon ball put um, 10 elements in it. It's not really important how many elements you type in here, just 10 because you know 10 is a nice number. And um, now create a for loop and I learned you about for loops in the ninth I suppose tutorial and um, so you should be able to understand what I'm doing right now. You should understand what I just typed, you know, because that's a basic for loop. And where's this max cannonballs? That's just free because it takes the value of max cannonballs. So it says as, as long as i is less than free because that's the value of max cannibals which I just told you so let's get moving now you type cannon ball i equals i okay I suppose this is like the hardest uh, part to understand and it doesn't look very complicated but it can be complicated because you know uh, what's in between the two square brackets is the element we're talking about. So we're talking about the value of i element in the cannibal array. And the value of i will first, it'll be, um, first the, the, um, ugh, I'm sorry. First i will be equal to, uh, zero. So this is actually i zero so we say that the zeroth element, the first element in the cannonball array, is equal to the value of i, which will also be zero. So the first element in the array is equal to zero. And then uh, once it has, um, then next time when it loops again, then because of this i plus plus thing, i will be equals to one. And then we say cannonball i, which will now be one. So the one element in the array is equal to one and then 2 because of this again then cannonball i which is now 2 so cannonball the second element or the third element actually because you know the computer starts kind of zero so the third element is equal to the value of i which is 2 so actually we're making i represent the element in the array and uh, yeah they count the uh, may sound a little bit confusing so I'll recap once we're done. Now just type C out cannonball I and this will print out you know the element it got to the element of the value of I in the array and uh, you know I'll explain that uh, once we compile the run. So you just hit F9 now and save this as um, advanced underscore arrays. 
Now as you see, just as I predicted, it says one. No, it says zero, one, and two. And don't close this just to minimize it because I'm going to show you. I'm going to use this to explain at once. Okay, there's really no need for me to explain this uh, up here again because you know you already know that. But this inside the for loop, yeah, I'm going to explain that again because you know, first when I first uh, got the uh, had to learn this, I found it a little bit confusing and I had to read over what I just read on the internet about it a few times before I started to understand what it actually did and what it actually meant. So I'm going to recap it again. Um, actually, we're only using i here. We say that first of all, it takes the value of i, which first will be zero. So cannonball zero is equal to zero. And then once the loop is um, being recycled again, now i will be equal to one because of this. So now it says cannonball one is equal to one. And then when it's recycled for the last time, because you know it only recycles three times, it only does this three times because cannonballs, max cannonballs is equal to three. Now I will be equal to two because you know it starts to count as zero, so cannonball two is equal to two. And then you know print out each time. Um, so like first time it'll say cannonball i, which is zero, so print out cannonball zero and the zeroth element in the array is equal to zero the first time the second time cannonball one is equal to one and the second time and the last time cannonball two is equal to two and uh, actually i suppose that's the best explanation i can give to you right now actually so um yeah i guess i'll just see you in the next tutorial but um, I don't know if this will help you understand better or something, or maybe that's just the basics of a for loop. But uh, if you try and change max cannonball to something like um, 10 and hit F9, now it will whoops, print out 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And uh, you know. Because now it will repeat this loop uh, 10 times and therefore it will have 10 elements in here. So the last time cannonball i will be 9 and that will be 9. And therefore print out the 9th element and the 9th element is equal to 9. So it doesn't really matter what you set the value of max cannonballs to. That was just to show you something. But um, yeah, I really hope that you understood this. If you didn't, if you didn't. Not if you didn't, good up, sorry. If you didn't, then please leave a comment in the video. Send me a private message or something. And if you comment, eh, I promise you I'll use every single one of my 500 characters in the comment to explain this the best way I can to you again. And, you know, if you really want to help me out, then uh, tell me what specific part you didn't understood. And uh, then I'll try and help you out from there. But um, I really, really hope that you understood this, even though I had some trouble explaining it, because it, it's really hard to explain. But I'll see you in the next tutorial. Um, yeah, that's about it. See you.